Well, at the most basic level, uh, modern money theory is trying to explain how modern monetary systems operate. Uh, almost without exception, monetary systems are state money systems, or we say sovereign currency systems, because the governments choose a currency and issue uh, that currency for the nation. There are a few exceptions, but this has been very common uh, around the world and throughout history for the past four thousand years or so. Um, and so we're describing how these monetary systems work. Um, and I guess the most uh, shocking uh, discovery that most people make as we describe the system is that governments are not like households. And so when we hear our elected representatives claiming that the government has to operate its budget in the same way that a household operates its budget, modern money theory says this is completely wrong. You can't understand anything about a government by extrapolating from a household situation. Households and firms and local levels of government are all users of currency. They are not the issuers of the national currency. And so that's a fundamental difference. The constraints that are faced by households, firms, and local governments are completely different from the constraints faced by the governments that are issuers of the currency. Um, and again, at the most basic level, the main difference is a currency issuer cannot run out of its own currency. A household can run out of currency. Uh, it has to have a job, earn currency by working, uh, it can borrow currency, it can sell assets to get currency, uh, whereas governments issue the currency as they spend or as they lend, and they can't run out of it in either case. Well, modern money theory applies to any nation that issues its own currency. Any authority, uh, whether it is a modern government or a, in the past uh, a crown or um, even before that a, a temple uh, that issues its own currency cannot run out of its currency and the main principles of modern money theory apply to those too. So uh, this certainly doesn't just apply to the United States government, it applies to um, the government of Turkey, it applied to the government of uh, Spain and Italy before they joined the Euro, which complicates matters in ways we can talk about later. Um, but no, it, it, it's applied uh, since the days of Babylonia to currency issuing nations. Since the 1930s, governments have thought that the main goal of economic policy is to promote economic growth. And uh, the reason for that, I think, is, is probably the Great Depression and also the, the development of what we call GDP, gross domestic product accounting. So we, we really focus on growth of GDP, and that um, has become a primary goal of governments. Modern money theory, as well as other approaches to economics, have come to realize that growth by itself is actually not an appropriate goal uh, for government um, for several reasons. Uh, one is that growth actually does not lead to full employment, um, which modern money theory thinks actually is probably the most important goal of government, but um, also because it can lead to uh, economic disaster and to uh, destruction of the environment, to global warming, and, and all the things that people talk about now. So uh, we argue that government ought to be focused on maintaining full employment, um, rising living standards, bringing people out of poverty, and growth by itself would be uh, not a main goal of policy. Now. Um, I want to uh, distinguish between growth that 
uses up natural resources and destroys the environment and um, growth of uh, uh, GDP by itself and improvement of living standards, I don't think that economic growth needs to uh, result in destruction of the environment. I think we can find a way to have uh, economic growth, improvement of people's living standards without destroying the environment. We can actually um, focus on growth that uh, reduces environmental destruction. Just as an example, uh, uh, retrofitting buildings to um, add insulation and make them more energy efficient creates jobs. Uh, it improves people's lives and it reduces destruction of the environment. The modern money theory approach begins with the understanding that at the macroeconomic level um, there actually are three uh, different sectoral balances, three main balances. The, the first is your domestic uh, private sector, which is households and firms taken together. The second is your domestic government. And the third is the rest of the world, as we would say. Um, at the macro level, when you add up the balances of each one of these, they must balance, balances, balance. So at the aggregate level, if you have one sector that spends more than its income, there has to be at least one other sector that spends less than its income. If your domestic, if we ignore just for a second the external balance, if your domestic private sector spends less than its income, we normally call that savings, it must mean that the government has spent more than its income. We call that a budget deficit. When we add the third sector, we can have either a surplus, which means that we are exporting more than we import, and that means that we are spending less uh, than we're receiving, so we're running a surplus on the external account. Uh, many people think that's a good thing, that uh, exporting more than you import is a good thing because you are saving, that is running a surplus on your external account, and you're accumulating claims against the rest of the world, uh, often in a, uh, one of the international reserve currencies like the US dollar or the UK pound. Um, People worry that if you don't do this, that you're becoming indebted to the rest of the world and that this is unsustainable. But once you bring in all three accounts, you see that actually this could be a sustainable position. Uh, your balances will balance at the aggregate level. As long as your government is running a deficit, you can run a current account deficit and your private sector can still be running a surplus, that is saving, accumulating financial assets. Um, and this can be perfectly sustainable. It does not put your private sector in danger. And since your government, as a sovereign currency issuer, can run deficits on a continual basis, um, this can be a sustainable position and nothing necessarily to worry about. Thank you.